สมจริงกุย President please be seated ต่อตรงนี้ The chamber now hands over the floor to the defense teams to put questions to this civil party. And uh, the combined time for the two defense teams is one session. So from now until the end of today's hearing. First, you have the floor, the defense team for Mr. You may now proceed, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, good afternoon, Madam Witness. Um, you were born in 1960, I understood. This means you were 15 in 1975, is that correct? Answer, yes, that is correct. Um, were you born and raised in Kampot province? Question, êtes-vous né et avez-vous grandi dans la province de Kampot? I was, I, I, uh, I uh, was raised in Chu district, Kampot province. Um, between 75 and 79, was Kampot province um, part of the southwest zone? Answer. I did not know at that time, but now I know that uh, it was in that zone. Um, Maybe I just didn't get it um, um, or noted it down well. Uh, when exactly did you join the Revolutionary Army? Uh, was that right after the liberation or was it before? Answer. I uh, joined the uh, uh, Khmer Rouge before the liberation. Can you remember how many months or weeks or years before? I did not remember it. But can you give an estimate or an approximate? Was it 1974, 1973? Answer. I cannot recall it. I'm sorry. Um, did you have older brothers, or did you have brothers rather, um, who also joined the revolution um, like you did before 1975? Answer. I had cousin. Réponse. J'avais des cousins. Um, let me read to you um, your statement D twenty two slash thousand sixty seven. Um, I have it somewhere here, the ERN numbers. The English ERN is 0084140. Uh, you talk about your two older brothers, Chum Sip, Chum Chun, um, and Chum Pon. Were they all, did they all join the revolution before 75?
answer. My younger brother, Chung Pon, did not join uh, the revolution. He was at the rare battlefield. Uh, Chung Chun, they were also at the rare battlefield. But did they um, join the armed forces against Lon Nol uh, before 1975? Your older brothers, Chum Chip and Chum Chun. Answer. I cannot recall it. If my elder brother became uh, a soldier in the Revolutionary Army, perhaps they did join. I'm not sure if I understand. Um, surely you know whether your older brothers, like yourself, joined the Revolution? Answer. They joined. So is it fair to say that um, all three of you, and possibly all four of you, including your younger brother, were Southwest Zone cadres? Answer. It's not correct. What were you then? Answer. I uh, did not hold the rank as a cadre at the time. In your statement, which now I have um, the ERN numbers of French 0057-5936 and Khmer 005 one eight uh, two four eight. This is document D twenty two slash thousand sixty seven. Uh, you indicated or you, you testified that um, your two older brothers and your younger brother were killed by comrade Pet, um, with the allegation that they were enemy agents. Did you give that statement? Answer. I did not know who killed my two elder brothers. And it is true that my younger brother was killed. I will read it for you again. In December 1978, sadly, my two older brothers and one younger brother, one Chum, Ch Chum Sip, a peasant, two Chum Chun, a peasant, and three Chum Pon, a peasant, were killed by Comrade Pat, regiment chief at Pnum Mono Monu Nop in Monu Nop Commune, Chuk district. Kampot province with the allegation that they were enemy agents. Is that what you stated or testified to? Answer. I did not give such statement. So your brothers were not killed by comrade Pet. Is that what you're saying? Answer. No, my two elder brothers were not killed by that individual. And uh, my uh, younger brother was killed. Um, but Comrade Pat was indeed the regiment chief of um, Regiment 135. Is that correct? Answer. 
Answer. Repose. I did not know Comrade Pied at that time, but when I met my aunt at the village, I knew that that person was Pied. Who was the regiment chief then? Who was the chief of Regiment 135? Answer. I have no knowledge of Regiment 135. Um, maybe I wasn't listening, but you were a member of Regiment 135, weren't you? Vous étiez membre du Régime 135, n'est-ce pas? Answer. I uh, was the member of uh, Battalion 135. Fine, Battalion or, one, or Regiment 135, it's translated as, as, as uh, in English into uh, both words. But who was the chief of Battalion 135? Mais qui était le chef du bataillon 135? Ta. Answer. The chief of a battalion of 135 was Comrade Met. No, um, I think Comrade Met was the chief of the Vision uh, 502. Is that correct? I'm asking you who was the chief or the commanding officer of battalion or regiment 135? Answer. Med was a female. Med was a female. I'm talking about Sue Met, the chief of Division 502. Uh, that surely was a man, wasn't he? The chief of Division 502, it was certainly a man. It's not the case. Answer. Sue Met was at Division 502. He was a male. So again, who was the chief then of... Your battalion or regiment 135. It was mate, the female comrade. Okay, and um, who was female comrade Soka? Et qui était alors la femme camarade Soka? Answer. Soka was also in uh, that unit. What, what rank had, did she have? Was she the deputy commander of um, Regiment or Battalion 135? Answer. I did not know whether she was the deputy or chief. Um, and is it correct that at one point in time after uh, 1975 you became a medic in Division 502, stationed at Pochentong Airport? Answer. I never. I was never a medic. Je n'ai jamais été soignant. I will read again the twenty-two slash one zero six seven to you. Lire un extrait du 
Prior to 75 to 70, April 75, I was a medic in Division 502 stationed at Pochentong Airport in Phnom Penh. Under the command of Comrade Somet, Chief of Regiment 135, and female Comrade Soka, Deputy Chief of Regiment 135. Now, presuming that you were stationed at Pochettino Airport, that must have been then after the liberation, but were you at one point in time a medic in Division 502? No, no, I uh, was not a medic. No, je n'ai pas été soignante. To whom did you speak when you gave um, your statement about what had happened to you, what has happened to you during and before DK, the DK regime? I did not know the name of the interviewer. Let me read something else um, from the same document, D22-1067, uh, same era and numbers as, um, as I mentioned earlier. Um, in early 1976, I was ordered by revolutionary Ankar to investigate the backgrounds of all the soldiers. Did you state that to whomever? Est-ce que vous avez dit cela à la personne avec qui vous vous êtes entretenu, quelle qu'elle soit uh, give uh, that statement. It was only me who was uh, under watch. Um, can you explain um, why it was that they first let you join Division 502, uh, and then apparently subsequently found out that you had a connection or that your father had a connection to the former Long Nol regime. Can you explain uh, why the people in Division 502 didn't discover that earlier? Answer. At that time, I was living with my aging grandmother in Chuk district, Kampot province, and I did not put in the biography that um, my parents had a connection with the former regime. So when you joined the revolution, um, the people in the division, forces of Tamok, they didn't realize that you, your father had a, a function within um, the Khmer Republic. Is that, is that what you're saying? Answer. They did not know at that time, and I was not part of uh, Tamok's army. But you were a member of Division 502. Um, I believe that division is generally referred to as a division consisting of Southwest Zone cadres. Or am I mistaken? de cette division qu'elle était constituée de cadres de la zone sud-ouest. Est-ce que je me trompe? Answer, I did not know about that. Do you know who Tamok is? No, I did not know Tamok then. I, I have heard of Tamok now.
But at the time you hadn't heard of Tamok. Et à cette époque-là, vous n'aviez pas entendu parler de Tamok. No. Réponse non. Did you know who Sumet was? Not Samet, but Sumet. Do you know who he was? Answer. I did not uh, know his uh, full name, but I heard uh, people say that uh, Sumet uh, was at the Division 502. But, Madam Civil Party, you were a member, you said, of Division 502. Surely you know who the division chief was? Answer. I did not know. I did not question others about this matter. I did not ask others about the, his the background of uh, Sumit. Did you know how many female combatants there were in total in Division 502? Answer. Réponse. There was a one the female uh, regime, uh, battalion consisting of uh, female combatants. And how many of these female combatants were there? Combien de ces combattants y avait-il? Answer. I did not know how many of them were there in the that battalion. I only knew that uh, there were three companies in one battalion, and I did not know how many female combatants in that battalion. Did you know what the, the main task of Division 502 was? Which part of the armed forces were they? Were they considered? What was the main task of 502? I have no knowledge of it. Does it jog your memory when I say that 502 was um, the Air Force of the Revolutionary Army? Answer, yes, that is true. Let me ask you some questions on Kampong Chinang Airfield. Um, why was it that you were sent, you and your unit members, to Kampong Chinang Airfield? Were you told the reason? Answer, they did not make any explanation. Uh, we were told that uh, we had to go and work at Kampong Chinang Airfield. Did they tell you why it was only three months or, or a little more than three months? Did they give you a reason for that? Did not tell the reason. Was female comrade Soka your commander while you were working at Kampong Chnang Airfield? Answer. Answer. 
answer. Yes. Oui. Um, did she give you the assignment where to work, what to do? Question, vous disait elle où at Kampong Chinang Airfield? Answer. I did not know at that time I was a com female combatant. No, but did she did she order you um, to do certain things, to do certain tasks? Was she your commander, commanding officer? Answer. At that time, Réponse. she was still my uh, commander. À cette époque, elle était toujours mon commandant. And uh, I went to Kampong Chinang Airfield uh, with uh, the company. À Kampong Chinang, à l'aéroport de Kampong Chinang avec la compagnie. But my question was, she was the one to Mais order all question, the combatants in the company to do certain tasks at Kampong Chinang si Airfield. Is that correct? des ordres par rapport aux tâches qu'il fallait accomplir et où c'était elle est ce exact at that time i knew only of what happened in my own com company but as for other assignment in other uh, units i have no idea dans ma compagnie pour les autres unités et tâches je sais rien when you joined um, Division 502, did you get a military training reçu une of some kind? Vous avez la division 500 de une formation militaire de quelconque. Answer. I was never trained. Réponse. Je n'ai jamais été formé. Did you know how to? Question. Uh, use an arm, a gun, a rifle. Did you know any of that? Un pistolet. Saviez-vous manier les armes? Answer: No. Réponse: No. What, what were you exactly doing? In 75 and 74, in the Southwest Zone Forces, what, what was your role? Dans les forces du Sud-Ouest, quel était votre rôle? Answer. At that time, I was told to carry rice. On m'a demandé de transporter du riz. But before 75, um, you were. You said. A female combatant um, at the time 14 years old um, what were you doing in the revolutionary forces of the southwest zone Answer. I did not participate in the battlefield, but as I stated, I carried the rice to the battlefield. But were you were you a combatant? Were you a military person? Question. Mais vous avez dit que vous étiez combattant. Étiez-vous militaire? You don't necessarily have to fight. You can be a military person with, without being on, on the battlefield. That's what I mean. Vous pouvez être militaire sans être sur le champ de bataille. C'est ce que j'entends par là. Answer. I was a female combatant. That is my title or rank. C'était mon titre. Mon rang, mon grade, si vous voulez. Um, I don't know, oh, Madam Civil Party. Um, let me move on to your marriage. Um, you said that you were forced to marry another cadre. Um, 
But three days later, you were allowed to divorce. Um, but at the same time, you said that militia men came passing by, eavesdropping to see whether you had consummated your marriage. Can you explain to me why they would pass by eavesdropping while three days later we, you were allowed to divorce? President, Madame Civil Pladi, please hold on. You may now proceed, lead co-lawyer. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Une courte observation. Il ne me Thank semble you, pas que la partie civile like a dit qu'elle avait divorcé ou qu'elle avait eu l'autorisation de divorcer, that, uh, mais simplement qu'ils s'étaient séparés. C'est juste un terme of, uh, qui, quand même, a une connotation uh, fort différente. Maybe I wrote it down uh, not accurately. I will. Did I understand your testimony, Madam Civil Party, that um, three days after your marriage you divorced? Or did I get that? Uh, did I not get that right? No, I did not. Divorce my Réponse. husband. Non, je pas divorcé. Three days after my marriage, uh, we uh, went to work mariage, in different locations. Maybe there's something with the translation, but I, I heard the word divorce. Um, what exactly did you say before the break? Answer. Maybe you confuse my statement. I did not say that I divorced my husband at that time. Three days after my marriage, I went to work in different place from that of my husband. Council, I, I seem to remember the word separation, not divorce. I'm not completely sure, but I think the word was separation. But we would have to check the transcript. Uh, that is very possible. Let me use another word. Did you? Uh, Madam Civil Party, separate Madame, uh, three civile, days later after the, the wedding from your husband? Answer, we live uh, separately at that time. Oui, nous habitions séparément à cette époque. And um, was that all right? Were you allowed to live separately? Uh, after three days? We were allowed to uh, work separate, in separate places. Nous pouvions travailler à des endroits différents. Okay, I will, I will move on. Maître Coppe, um, je vais passer au Were question. you ever re-educated um, while you were Working at Kapuchang Airfield, did you attend re-education sessions? Assister à des séances de réeducation. Answer: I was never re-educated. Réponse: Je n'ai jamais été réeduqué. Um, can you explain Question. whether there was a difference in treatment of you? While you were at Kampong Chinang Airfield in those three months, vous étiez traité différemment lorsque vous étiez pendant ces trois mois où vous étiez à Kampong Chinang. Difference, for instance, in the months before you were working and the months after that you were working. Was there a difference in in treatment of you while you were at Kampong Chinang Airfield? Comment dit étiez-vous traité différemment alors que vous étiez à Kampong Chinang? Answer, no. No. Um, how can we establish, or, or maybe you can un, can explain to me um, why your assignment at Kampong Chang Airfield um, 
was the result of you having had tendencies or you being um, tempered or refashioned? Can you explain that? Answer. I did not know that I was sent to that place because I had non, been uh, connected with the former regime. Là, I knew only that I had. I was sent to work there. So you were sent there in the, the normal duty of you as a soldier within Division 502? Votre tâche normale is, is that how I have to understand your testimony? Answer, yes, that is oui, correct. My last question, um, you said that uh, you could not refuse uh, an order or the instruction to go to Camp Pongtian Airfield. Um, is it allowed, was it allowed for uh, combatants to, re to refuse uh, military orders? Given by the commanders. Était-il possible pour des combattants de refuser des ordres militaires provenant de leurs supérieurs? Réponse. We were not allowed to refuse uh, the orders. Nous pas le droit de refuser les ordres. But were you taught as a combatant that um, every soldier always has to follow the Question. orders from their commanders? N'est-ce pas la règle que les combattants doivent suivre les ordres de leurs commandants? We were told uh, to perform well in our work in order to complete the project sooner. But while you were a combatant uh, before and after 1975, were you taught that um, you have to follow the orders from your commanding officer? On vous a dit que vous deviez obéir aux ordres de vos supérieurs immédiats, de vos commandants. Réponse. While living under the regime, we had to do whatever we were ordered to do. Sous ce régime, nous devions faire ce que l'on nous disait de faire. That's not what I'm getting at. Um, in every army in the world, soldiers Dans quelle or armée whoever du monde, in, soldats, in, in the army have to follow the orders of their superiors. Were you told to follow the orders of your superiors as well? Vous a-t-on dit de obéir aux ordres de vos supérieurs alors que vous étiez combattant? We were told to follow the instructions and the disciplines, uh, disciplines from the commander. On a dit de suivre les instructions et de respecter la discipline des commandants. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Secretary. Merci, President. Merci, Madam Secretary. Civil. President, thank you, Council Copper. Merci, Mr. Copper. Floor is now Je given to the co-councillors for Kyrgyzstan and Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Madame, uh, good afternoon. Je pense que je serai assez rapide, uh, mais je voulais vous poser une question uh, un peu plus large que celle qui vous a été bit, posée à l'instant uh, sur la rééducation. Est-ce que pendant le régime, so during the regime, vous avez été rééduqué during the Khmer Rouge regime, were you ever re-educated? No, I was not. No. Hello. Je voudrais so, vous dire uh, like ce que vous avez you, déclaré uh, d'après les documents uh, qui nous ont été uh, remis par vos avocats. On the basis of the documents uh, that were given to us by your lawyers, D22, this is uh, index D22-1067. RN français 00 Khmer 00 Anglais 00 
84, pardon, 69, 68. Vous parlez de votre mariage. Et vous vous dites, la personne m'a dit que si je ne me mariais pas, je ne pourrais fréquenter aucun garçon. Par mon refus, j'ai été rééduqué pendant cinq nuits. Dans la journée, je travaillais normalement, alors que la nuit, on m'a rééduqué de 19h à 21h. Je me rappelle que j'avais une mauvaise biographie, etc. Ça, c'est ce que vous avez déclaré le 22 avril 2010 à Avocats sans frontières. Mais il est vrai que vous aviez fait également d'autres déclarations, apparemment toujours en 2010. C'est le RN 00 57 59 36 pour le français. Pour le Khmer, 00 51 82 45 et pour l'anglais, 00 84 21 40. Vous parlez également de ce mariage et vous dites... En revanche, heureusement, d'un jour à l'autre, je n'ai pas été convoqué pour rééduquer. Donc j'ai pensé que je pourrais survivre. Ce document porte non seulement votre signature, mais vos empreintes. C'est celui dans lequel vous dites que vous aviez été désigné par l'ANCAR pour faire des recherches sur les biographies de tous les militaires. Alors, je vous demande, madame, quelle est la bonne version entre ces deux documents que nous avons Celui dans lequel vous dites que vous avez été rééduqué pendant cinq jours de 19 à 21 heures, ou celui dans lequel vous dites que vous n'avez jamais été rééduqué I did not know whether it was a form of re-education as je I was called to attend si a meeting and I was told to follow the, the, the instructions. Et on dit de suivre les instructions. Est-ce que j'ai bien compris tout à so l'heure, vous avez well, contesté également que vous aviez été nommé par l'ANCAR pour étudier les biographies des militaires, c'est exact Est-ce que vous avez apparemment été appointé pour étudier les biographies des militaires, c'est vrai Oui. No, I was not instructed to go around and do a background research of those members in the unit. I was actually told that my background had been researched and I was affiliated as my father was a former policeman and my next or my stepfather was a soldier. I myself did not have the authority. I was vested with an authority to go and do a background research. Donc, un pouvoir d'aller faire des enquêtes. Et sur votre occupation au sein de la Révolution comme infirmière, là aussi, vous contestez l'avoir dit lorsque vous avez à poser votre signature et vos empreintes sur le, la déclaration de parti civil. Vous n'avez jamais été infirmière dans l'armée. But however, now you tell us that you never were a nurse in the army, or? I was never a nurse. <laughs> 
vous avez relu ce document avant d'y apposer votre signature et vos empreintes digitales before you it and before en 2010, you it le in formulaire de renseignement sur la victime that is the No. I actually did not read it and no, I uh, did not lire. really know how to read it that well. Je ne savais pas lire si bien que ça. Vous l'avez rédigé seul, ce document, ou avec quelqu'un d'autre Parce qu'à la fin de ce document, il est indiqué que vous l'avez relu. Je ne l'ai pas lu. À plusieurs reprises, tout à l'heure, lorsque vous And étiez interrogé, vous avez tenu à préciser que vous étiez la seule suspectée d'avoir des liens. Qu'est-ce que vous vouliez dire à ce moment-là quand vous disiez cette phrase Vous vouliez dire que vous étiez la seule dans votre unité à avoir été envoyée là pour cette raison Je veux parler des liens avec l'ancien régime. Je veux parler des liens avec l'ancien régime. Je ne sais pas si je suis un homme qui a été affilié avec les anciens régimes. Mon père était un ancien soldat. 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 Oui, mais à plusieurs reprises, vous avez dit que vous étiez la seule à qui l'on faisait ce reproche. Vous pouvez préciser ce que vous vouliez dire. Vous l'avez dit au moins deux fois. I did not know whether other people's backgrounds had been researched, but I myself was told that. What did you say about that? Sur d'autres personnes, mais j'ai moi on me l'a dit. Je n'ai pas d'autres questions, Monsieur le Président. I have no further questions, Mr. President. President, thank you, Council. Merci, Maître. And the National Council for the Defense, uh, do you have any question for this party? Council Councilman, no, I don't, Mr. President. Councilman, no. Merci, Monsieur le Président. President, thank you, Madame Tum Samuel. Merci, Madame. As the Chamber indicated uh, at the beginning of your testimony that uh, at the conclusion of your testimony you will be given an opportunity to make a statement of a sufferings in relation to the allegations against the two accused, that is Nunji and Kiesem Horn, which were inflicted upon you during the Dimouti Kambuji regime and that resulted in your civil party application for moral and collective Reparation. Votre the damages include physical, emotional, or material as a direct result of those crimes. And that actually happened upon you. And if you wish to do so, 
you can do it si now. vous le souhaitez, vous pouvez maintenant faire votre déclaration. Civil party. Since I joined the army of the Democratic Kampuchi regime, my emotion was damaged. Kampuche démocratique. I had to force myself to work hard when my hand was infected. Très fort et dur. I asked for Alors permission to rest, but I was not allowed to. Reposer. As a result, at the moment, I had a heart problem. J'ai donc maintenant des and problèmes cardiaques. I also had problem with my prostate. J'ai aussi des problèmes de prostate. My parents and siblings had been killed. My house had been lost, my land ma had been lost, a été tué, I had ma nothing left but myself perdu, alone. Seul. I could not Donc, depend on anyone je ne de but myself. Sauf And this still haunts me at present. Je suis I lost every member of my family. Tous les de ma And that made me suffer, and I am ridden with souffert. illnesses. Et While I was living with my parents, they never asked me to do any work at all. Quand je vivais avec mes parents, ils it was a peaceful de environment as I was living in harmony with them, je but en under the regime, avec mes parents. I was forced to work revanche, as an animal. Sous ce régime, on m'a fait travailler comme un animal. And when my menstruation was interrupted, I had problem with my Abdo, abdominal pain eu des en and des that affected me physically and emotionally. Et cela m'a beaucoup affecté, tant au point de vue affectif que physique. The most daunting aspect was that I lost both parents Et le pire, and c'est que j'ai perdu mes parents, siblings, et ma fratrie. I'd like to ask the accused that now. You have been found uh, guilty of all those charges accusés, by this court. Vous avez été Are you ready to face uh, those ah, charges? And do you have the honor to live in this earth, or you wish to go to hell and live there? Avez-vous I ask question on behalf of all the victims in the Cambodia. J'ai une demande au nom du peuple du Cambodge. In fact, I, I want to seek a personal or individual uh, award as Je those people who were victims at the, uh, the Diamond Island of Kopik. Thank you, Mr. President. Ont été de President, Kopik, the chamber would like to inform you, you that in the hearing, uh, la chambre. That was held previously. The two accused uh, expressly maintained their rights to remain silent. And the chamber uh, noticed that, 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 that so far they still stand by their right to remain silent. And except until the chamber has received firm information from the accused and their co counsel. Sauf notification contraire express de la part de la Cour directed the accused and their co-counsel to inform the chamber donc, in due course if they decide to waive their rights to remain silent and agree to answer the question at any stage of the proceedings. So far, the chamber has not received any response regarding the change of their position on their advice to remain silent and to respond to questions. Et donc, un tel changement qui leur permettrait de répondre à des questions. The hearing of the testimony of this witness 
now conclude and the chamber is grateful to you madame Jum Samin and the hearing of your testimony and the statement of suffering that you claimed inflicted upon you during the democratic Kambodji regime has now concluded voilà qui met fin à votre and you may return to your place of residence and the chamber wishes you all the best and a safe journey Bonne chance. The court officer, please uh, collaborate with the WISU staff de concert avec and make necessary transportation arrangements for the civil party to return to her uh, place of residence. Assure le bon retour the hearing de la partie now adjourns and we will resume again tomorrow, that is 25 June 2015, uh, from 9 o'clock in the morning. For uh, tomorrow, the chamber will hear the testimony of a witness, that is to TCW 855, in relation to the first January Dam work site. The information is for the parties and the general public. Security personnel are instructed to take the two accused, Nunchi and Kusumpon, back to the ECCC detention facility and have them returned to attend the proceedings tomorrow, 25 June 2015, before 9 o'clock in the morning. The court is now returned.